fake victim, woman found guilty of lying about grooming gangs. This story is like so devious and there's so much to unpack here. So just like buckle up. Eleanor Williams, a 22-year-old woman from Barrow in Furness, was arrested for making false RAPE, I have to spell it out because of YouTube, um, false RAPE allegations against a series of white men and fabricating stories about being trafficked by Southeast Asia, by a Southeast Asian grooming gang, playing upon fears surrounding the real and tragic phenomenon of the Rochdale grooming gang. In May of 2020, Williams made a Facebook post that claimed that she had been abducted, beaten, and RAPE'd by a group of men and then taken to quote-unquote sex parties. The post led to a creation of a Facebook group called Justice for Ellie and a crowdfunding campaign raised over 22,000 British pounds. However, Investigations revealed that most of Williams' allegations were false and her injuries were self-inflicted. Williams' accusations led to the rise of anti-Muslim hate crimes and anti-Asian sentiment in Barrow and the formation of a far-right group called Patriotic Alternative. Ellie's posts also ruined the lives of the men she accused. It ruined businesses, destroyed marriages, forced others to move repeatedly, and pushed some to attempt self-deletion. Williams is scheduled to be sentenced in March. So this is wow. like so wild. And I wanted to talk about this for a number of reasons. Because one, like it is important for thoughtful, genuine, like people of a liberal mindset to talk honestly and authentically about the problem of grooming gangs in the UK. Because this is like a real phenomenon and this is a real thing that happened and it was allowed to continue to happen because people were not willing to call a thing a thing because of the racial tensions involved and multicultural factors involved. But, and we can go into more detail with that if people don't know what I'm talking about. But for someone want to say psychotic because i know people that have psychosis and like they don't act like this like i don't even know what level of disorder or like fracturing from reality or narcissism that this person is living under but to take that real life thing that happened this horrible systematic abuse of children that happened for decades in the United Kingdom and falsify that merely to be getting attention and money and sympathy and go out of her way to falsify evidence to like make this a whole To, to to get I, it it boggles my mind and so good news about this though is that she has been found guilty of like perverting the cause of justice as it's called and she's going to be sentenced to this which is a very serious crime in the uk and i was looking up what kind of sentence she could face it said life imprisonment is a possible sentence, but I don't think that's very likely. But she she could be facing like years in prison for this, and it just makes me so viscerally angry because when you know people who have gone through despicable forms of abuse in this realm, to see someone lie and make it up when you know how difficult it is for people to even be believed and taken seriously to begin with. Like it, I, it just makes me lose my mind. But um, Armin, uh, what is your reaction to this? Wait, can you answer this question? 
Sasan is saying, does she have a mental illness? So far, it has not been established that she has any mental illness based on any reports that I could find. Um, I found some reports that said when the sentencing comes in March, that's when they will begin to discuss if she had any sort of mental illness because, and then that will be taken into account when she's sentenced for the crime that she was found guilty of. Right. Because there were reporters or people who were being interviewed in the reports who were saying like, you don't go about doing this kind of thing if you're like a well person. So there's got to like, even if it's just like you're technically well, but there's like trauma in your past that makes you act in this way. Like there's, there's something big. Your idea is keep going in and out. Can you sell your idea is coming in and out. Can you make sure you selected the correct, correct microphone? Is this better? No, there was a good, better quality microphone. Do you want to check where your audio settings? How about um, this? Yes. Always check whether which microphone is selected. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, um, by the way, I don't know if these whole grooming gangs in the UK, I don't, I, I haven't, I keep getting mixed reports of what is actually happening here. By the way, before I actually comment on that. Wait, don't scroll down. It, Fuck. I don't know if I we have, can show that on YouTube. Well, it's we, too can late now. Show, no. we can show that. We, I've shown, I, I showed this. Is this like, so what are we showing? What we're seeing is her being heavily abused. Like her face is like, look beaten up. How did she, if, if, if this did not happen, how did it, how did her face get like that? Is that forensic experts determined I... in a court of law that she inflicted these injuries on herself. They even found receipts for the hammer that was used to cause the injury that she purchased herself. She did this with the hammer to her own face. Yes. There's like way more photos that we your idea keeps getting cutting in and out. Your mic is like going in and out. Um, what the hell? Why would she do that? I mean, I can't answer that kind of a question, right? Like, why does someone do something like that? That is like so beyond my capacity. Like, I, I can't answer that question. But what's crazy is that when she started these rumors of the grooming gangs, that she had already been found guilty of making false allegations of RAPE against men before. And when she was, she, she's been doing this since she was 16. And then within yeah. 20 minutes of her making this post on Facebook, claiming that this stuff happened to her, the police came to arrest her because I think it violated some aspect of her sentence for her previous charges but it was too late at that point and it started up a whole bunch of racial abuse in her town it started up anti-muslim attacks in her town it started up a far right group these men were systematically targeted by the community like the son of one of the guys who was accused of being the ringleader um dropped out of college because he was being bullied so much like there are people who got divorced and their children taken away from them because of the allegations and all of it was found to be false mm. and it makes me so upset because like the only silver lining is that she's actually being held accountable for it because I've known people personally who are some of the best men I have ever met in my life who have faced false, at like legitimately false allegations. And I've personally witnessed what it does to them. And it's so mentally devastating and heartbreaking to see someone who is like genuinely an exemplary man like go through that and then have no consequences for being put through that experience it's it's so it's so like 
devastating. And this went on for years. One of the people that she falsely accused was held in jail for 10 weeks before they actually realized that the IP address used to make the messages that she was using as evidence against him were coming from her mother's own IP address, like at the house that she stays at. And that he was actually like being held for something else at the time she accused him of RAPE. 10 weeks, 10 weeks in jail with actual offenders. You know, mm. but, and to use this situation where there is legitimate tension in the UK over this ongoing scandal and how it plays into very delicate fears that are being propagated against immigrants and asylum seekers and racial abuse and all this stuff to just use that to get attention and then have that whipped up against like your own community. It's so devious. The, the details of this case had my jaw on the floor. She would go and have like sexy conversations with men that she would find off of Tinder. And then she would go change their names in her contact list to be Muslim sounding names so that she could then screenshot that and then use that as evidence of how she was being talked to in creepy ways and sexual advances and all this stuff. Okay, well, take this woman away for a very, very long time, obviously, she said. Yeah. Wow. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm very quickly curious about what she said about you are not sure about the whole grooming gang thing, because didn't you interview a grooming gang survivor on secular jihadists yeah well obviously it happens i didn't say but i just don't i mean the narratives have been that it's mostly being done by uh, muslims in the uk and the media is out to cover that cover up for that right um i don't I, but I've seen reports that that's actually fake, fake, that grooming gangs are as much a white thing in the UK, you know, as it is like a Pakistani thing. Like it is, um, it is a misrepresentation that is, that this is mostly done by Pakistani or Muslim related gangs that you could find as much as much as the same amount of activity or even more among, you know, but again, I don't know because both the groups who claim they have been, um, been to uh, the allegation, like how could I rely on data when the people are saying that there is a cover up? There seems to be a cover up on both sides. Like they're telling us that the mm. uh, the the media, the mainstream media, and the police uh, are covering up how much uh, Pakistani gro uh, grooming gangs are responsible for this, and that they're not. You know, one side is saying that, and the other side is saying like, the exact same thing about the opposite. Like, um, like for example, Qualet, the the organization that Majid Nawaz was was. Um, no, responsible no, it was called for. something else. No, no, Quillette is a publication. What? Yeah, I forgot. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Quilliam. That. Quilliam. Quilliam. Sorry, Quilliam. Yeah, uh, Quilliam came out and with data that said that it's mostly like it's uh, uh, mostly done by Pakistanis, right? And it's it's um, I don't know if I could trust that, um, them, especially given that Majid Nawaz has came out to be a complete conspiracy theory nut job. Uh, okay, he lost his mind, but he was like, no, he, he, he wasn't completely off the train that he was that he is now. Like, do we know that? I don't know. I don't know. Bandwagon. I was. I went back to rewatch videos that he did to talk about this issue, and he was like very on point. So I was actually like such a trip down memory lane to see Magic Nawaz like not 
the way yeah but i don't know if the data is accurate okay because i don't know like maybe they were biased i don't know i don't know okay i haven't done i haven't done enough research so i'm not i'm not a comfortable saying otherwise okay so deciding one way or another okay i'm just like i'm gonna claim ignorance over fair enough i think that's the totally justified thing to do in a situation like when you don't know and Mm -hmm. the argument that i have heard is that there definitely is this kind of activity in perpetrated by like white men or white people but it wasn't systematic in the same way it wasn't necessarily specifically targeting white girls in the same way and then there's like the other argument of that england is a majority white country so like it's obvious that the majority of crimes will be committed by white people but they were saying that for this specific kind of systematic targeted crime the there was a disproportionate amount of specifically pakistani people i don't know anymore i don't know if that's i don't know i'm just giving the argument i'm not gonna like make a claim on its veracity yeah yeah. I've, i've heard that so many times and I have no idea if that's true because I haven't done a deep dive into it. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be agnostic about it. D is saying something very helpful here. D is saying this case is a reminder not to go straight to any emotional response, but to wait for facts. She had so much support, and that's what really makes me upset. Is that that is such an abuse of that trust of a community that has a genuine will to want to support someone who went through something horrific. And like, the, oh my God, the level of like, oh my God, this woman, like for the other people who go through anything similar to this, it's going to make the reality of dealing with that more difficult. Mm. It makes me so angry, but I think I don't know. That's why this is important to talk about, like in a frank manner, and stop yeah. instead of saying like, "Oh, these things don't happen." Da da da. Like they do happen. Lives get destroyed, like on both sides of the equation. So let's be, just be honest about it. Have an honest discussion. Let's talk about it in with care, without demonizing people. Because if like we are like just like liberal people liberal progressive type people don't want to talk about it because it's uncomfortable and it's not politically correct and it's not fitting the right narrative da 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 the only people that are going to fill that void to talk about this issue that other people are hiding are going to be like far right people who use it to fit their agenda of demonizing other people Hmm. and so that's why it's important for people like us to talk about these really uncomfortable things that are true that do happen because if we don't talk about it, then we're leaving that narrative and that topic to people who are going to be very abusive with and weaponize that narrative. Right. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.